Loving Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us another Sabbath, for gracing us with thy, thy presence, for blessing us with the Sabbath school, for giving us opportunity, Father, to make things right with thee. Father, we pray that you will forgive us of our sins, that you will come into our hearts, that you will continually give us a deep, sincere, and earnest, repentant heart from sin, and a true conversion to look and live like Jesus. Father, bless us as we open your words today. May the words that we hear not be my words, but words from on high. May you speak clearly to your people today that we will make haste in preparation for your soon return and also continually engage in the work of preparation even after the work, even after the message is over. Let everyone be attentive, let the distractions be limited, and may every attention be fixed upon thee is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, I want to welcome those online as we open God's Word together, and those locally as we study God's Holy Word. You know, our subject this afternoon is entitled, God's People in a Crisis, Nations in Distress, as the World Pushes for Global Rest. One more time, God's people in a crisis, nations in distress, as the world pushes for global rest. Let's go in our Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 16. These are the words of Christ to us in these last days, words in red, and we must hear messages from Jesus in these last days. Christ is speaking here to the Pharisees, and he asked a question, and that question needs to be asked to each and every one of us as we near the coming of the Lord. And that question is simply this, can you discern the signs of the times. One more time. The question is, can you discern what? The signs of the times. Can you discern the signs of the times? Do you know the times that we're living in? Can you see that prophecy is fulfilling? Can you see that we're nearing home, that Christ is soon to come? Can you discern the signs of the times? Matthew chapter 16, verse 3. The Bible says, Matthew 16, verse 3, And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering, O ye hypocrites. Notice Christ's Christ, Christ question now. Ye can discern the face, the face of the sky, but can you discern, what does he say? The signs of the times. My question is, can you see the signs of the times? Do we know that probation is soon to close? Can we see that Jesus is soon to come? Can we see that a Sunday law is soon to pass? Can we discern the signs of the times? And God wants us in these last days, not just the preachers, not just those preaching on the pulpit, not just the pastors or the teachers, but each and every one of us, even the children, to discern what? The signs of the times. And friends, today we're going to look at the signs of the times. Again, God's people in the crisis, nations in distress, and as the world pushes for global peace. Can we discern the signs of the times? Now, why did Jesus ask us to discern the signs of the times or to know the signs of the times? And how do you know the signs of the times? By the events fulfilling Bible prophecy. Why did Christ tell us we need to know the signs of the times? Listen, it's because he knows that if we see the events fulfilling Bible prophecy, he knows that we would believe the message. We would believe prophecies are fulfilling. We believe the Bible is true. We would believe Christ is coming when you see the signs of the times. And there are many people that would come into the church, but they're not coming. Want to know why? They need to see the events fulfilling Bible prophecy. They need to see current events. If people would see the current events, we're told in the spirit of prophecy that many more would believe the message. Watch this, friends, all right? Testimony to the Church, Volume 1, page 260, paragraph 3. God's people, not just the pastors now, but God's people, must take warning and discern the signs of the times. The signs of Christ's coming are too plain to be doubted. And in view of these things, everyone, not just the pastor, everyone who professes the truth should be a living preacher. God calls upon all both preachers and people to awake. All heaven is astir. The, sign, the scenes of earth's history are fast closing. We are amid the pearls of the last days. So God's people must discern the signs of the times. All of us need to be watching current events, fulfilling Bible prophecy. 
and get on our knees and pray and see these signs to say, Lord, help me to be a living preacher, not just a pastor, but all of us should be living preachers, looking at the signs and warning the world. And we're told, friends, that many more would believe the message if they saw the events fulfilling Bible prophecy. Testimony to the Church, volume 6, page 61, paragraph 4. The perils of the last days are upon us, and all work and in our work, we are to warn the world of the danger they are in. Let not the solemn scenes which prophecy has revealed to us be left untouched. That means we should be touching these events. Every event we see fulfilling Bible prophecy, it should not be left untouched. Now watch what it goes on to say. If our people were what? If our people were half awake. Only one person said it, so I guess only one person is half awake. Are you with me? Listen. If our people were half awake, if they realized, what did they realize? The nearness of the events portrayed in the revelation, a reformation would be wrought in our churches, and what? Many more would do what? Believe the message. So it's not enough to just open our Bible and say what the Rock of the Beast is, or open our Bible and say what the Sunday law is, or open our Bible and talk about the close of probation. We need to open our Bible and point to a current event, point to a sign of the time, so that many more would do what? They believe the message. So this is why we study current events, and Jesus says, Can you not discern the what? The signs of the signs of the times. And when we see the signs of the times, the people in the church would wake up, we're told, if our people were half awake. If they saw the nearness of the event, if we saw these events, the church would wake up and the world would wake up. It says, Romans 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation, what? Nearer than we believe. So if we saw these events fulfilling Bible prophecy, the Bible says, we would wake up out of sleep. All right, let me say amen. Friends, I want us to wake up. I want us to wake up. I want to be awake. I don't want to be the disciples sleeping as the crisis is approaching. And that's why we share current events, whether it be in the world or in the church, to awaken God's people for what's coming. All right, we say amen. amen. People don't like that. They will call you all kind of names. But we are told to do this, friends, to wake up the church. Someone told me a minister's work is to bring the, give the congregation a minister, right? <laughs> It's time to wake us up. Are you with me? Say amen. Now, one of the signs that we're going to be looking at today, the signs of the times, is in Luke chapter 21, verse 25 to verse 27. This sign points us to the second coming of Christ. And this sign we're going to study today is the distress of nations. The distress of nations. The Bible says, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, what? Talk to me. Distress. Of nations with perplexity, the sea and waves roaring, men's hearts filling them for fear, and looking for those things which are coming upon the earth, for the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall ye see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So the Bible says one of the signs of the times is looking on the earth, looking at the distress of nations, the perplexities that are upon the earth. This points us to Christ coming in the clouds of heavens. So we're going to be studying today the distress of nations. As God's people are in a crisis, the nations are in distress, and the world is pushing for global peace. Distress of nations. What are some things that are now distressing the nation? If you read Matthew 24, it talks about earthquakes and natural disasters, right? So natural disasters are one of the things right now that are distressing the nation. Look at this. U.S. struck with more than 100 tornadoes, heavy snow in April. So we looked at a quotation a couple weeks ago where Sister White says that right before the close of probation, there would be more what? Tornadoes. You remember that? And there's been a hundred tornadoes in such a short period of time. Can you discern the signs of the what? Times? We've been having tornadoes for so long, Pastor. But not with the succession and not with the magnitude that we're having it today. It's probation soon to close. Talk to me, friends. Can you discern the signs of the times? Notice this. June marked by record-setting U.S. heat waves, severe weather. Heat waves. It says... The nation struck 12 separate billion dollars disasters so far this year. 
So there is an economic crisis. All right, we'll come back to that. But also heat waves. The weather is out of control. Natural disasters. Just this week, I was talking to a brother. He was telling me how hot it was where he was. The weather is changing. Are you with me? Can you discern the what? Signs of the times. And this sunblock crisis is all about climate change. Can you discern the signs of the times? All right? I'll read what I can. I know you can, may not be able to see. So this billion dollar disasters from January to June. So all of the different disasters, such as the tornadoes and the different things that were taking place, are causing the world to now have an economic crisis, trying to fix these different things, right? Can you discern the signs of the times? What else is happening in the news? The Bible says in Matthew 24, there would be famines. Are you with me? Now, we say, when are we going to see a famine? Friends, it's all over the world. In Ethiopia, it says fears of looming, looming famine for 20 million people. So this is happening in different parts of the world. Famines. And it says 20 million people. Now, watch this. It says, Ethiopian's government confirms that hundreds have died of starvation in recent months. Hundreds of people are dying of starvation. Now, we may not be experiencing a famine here, but all over the world, Matthew 24 is fulfilling. Can you discern the signs of the times? Hunger hotspots for countries face famine, United Nations reports. Now, notice the nations facing a famine, all right? Ethiopia, Nigeria, South Sudan, and Yemen. It says, brace for starvation and death. Can you discern the signs of the times? Can you imagine? If one day they said to us here in Hawaii that we won't be able to eat anymore, there's no more food supply coming, and we all have to prepare for what they said here, starvation and what? Death. We may not be experiencing it here, but people are experiencing famine. Do we discern, friends, the signs of the times? Famine knocking at the door of 41 million worldwide. Do you discern? The signs of the time. First it said 20 million, now it says 41 million. Friends, are we living in the last days? Yes, we are, friends. See, these signs, if we're not looking at them, we would read our Bibles and say, you know what, nothing is happening. All things are continuing. And we will say, my Lord delayeth his coming. But when we see these things, we know that Christ is soon to come, and we need to pray for those that are suffering right now. We need to encourage them and also finish the work to end all suffering on earth and also the suffering in heaven. If we finish the work, we can end the suffering. Right? We say amen. All right, friends. Jesus says in Matthew 24, there will be diseases, pestilences in diverse places. Are there more talks about pestilences? Current situation, it says that the H5 bird flu is widespread in wild birds worldwide causing outbreaks in poultry, all right, fish products, and U.S. dairy cows with several cases of H5 in U.S. dairy workers, right? So they're saying there's bird flu found in dairy products, bird flu found in fish products, bird, bird flu found in animal products. Do you discern what? The signs of the? The times. Hosea chapter 4 says, as we near the coming of the Lord, that the beast of the earth is going to languish. That means they're going to wither away. They're going to get sick. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea will languish. No wonder why God is calling us back to a plant-based diet, Genesis chapter 1, right? The fruits, the seeds, and that's the vegetables. Because God wants us to be sustained during the time of trouble. God gave Israel manna to go through their crisis. Will he also change our diet right before his coming? Oh, yes, friends. Do you discern? The signs of the times. And all of these events are pointing us to the Sunday law crisis and the close of probation. Great controversy. Page 589. It says, Satan works through the elements also to gather his harvest of unprepared souls. Even now he is at work in accidents. And what's that word? We're going to come back to that word. Calamities. By sea and land. In great conflagrations. That's wildfires. All right in fierce tornadoes, in terrific hailstorms, in tempests, in floods, in cyclones, tidal waves, earthquakes, in every place, in a thousand forms, Satan is doing what? He's exercising his what? Power. Now friends, what I want to do is have balance. Last week we talked about Satan's power on the remnant. Today we're talking about Satan's power in the 
world. You see that, friends? We have a message for the church and the, and the world. And Satan wants to bring calamities upon this earth. The Bible says that men's heart will be filling them for fear, seeing these calamities. Now, one of the things that we're going to see, the Bible says that the nations will be distressed. Are you with me? And one of the things that is distressing the nations is not just the famines and the wars and these things. Well, I, I gave it away. Not just the famines and the natural disasters, but one of the things that is going to distress this earth is war. Is what? War. Let's go in our Bible. First, First Samuel chapter 30. Now follow me, friends. Why are we talking about this today? Oh, friends, we're going to line it up real nice by, by God's grace. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 1. One of the things that will distress this nation is war. War. War is going to distress this nation like never before. And in the Bible, when there was a war taking place between the Amalekites and Ziklag, the Bible says that David was greatly distressed. One more time. When there was war taking place between the Amalekites and Ziklag, the Bible says that David was what? Distressed. So what were the stress the nations? War. War. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. Are you with me? Say amen. All right. The Bible says, And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag, and the third day the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag and smitten, persecuted, fought war with Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they taken the women captives that were therein and slew not any, slew not any. As it says, and they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Now notice what the Bible says in verse number six. And David was what? Why was he distressed? Because of what was taking place between Amalekites and Ziklag. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him at this time. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man his sons and his daughters. But David did what? Encouraged himself where? In the Lord. Now friends, as we see these events fulfilling, it will cause distress upon the earth. And we are to encourage ourselves in the Lord. The Bible says, when we see these things, it's time to do what? Look up. Look up. Why? Our redemption is what? Drawing nigh. These distresses, friends, are coming upon this earth. Wars and calamities are coming upon this earth. And God is saying, it's time to look up. Is there war taking place right now? Between Israel and Hamas? Between Palestine and Ukraine? Are there wars taking place right now? Israel's war on Gaza updates? New Israel, Israeli truce proposal given to Hamas. Again, Russia, pounds, Ukraine, war, energy faculties, uh, facilities with missiles and drone barrage. And what does Sister White say about war at causing distress upon the earth in the last days? It says here, Testimony to Church, Volume 1, page 260, paragraph 1. I saw greater what? Distress in the land. Then we have yet witnessed. I heard groans, cries of distress. I saw large companies and active battle, war. I've heard the booming of the cannon, the clash of arms, the hand-to-hand -hand fight, the groan and prayers of the dying. The ground was covered with wounded and the dead. I, I saw desolate, despairing families and pinching want in their dwelling, dwellings. Even now, many families are suffering want. But this will what? Talk to me. Increase. So war is going to what? Increase. And she says this was what? Greater distress. So distress is going to increase as what? War increases. Do you see that? Say amen. Yes. The faces of many look haggard, pale, pinched with hunger. God alone can shield, can be our shield and strength in this time of our national what? What did she call now the wars? Calamity. What did she call the wars again? And what will bring the son-in-law? Calamities. That's it. Great Controversy, page 590, paragraph 1. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of what? Sunday Sabbath. And that this sin, the breaking of Sunday Sabbath, has brought what? Calamities. If that's good, say Amen. 
So what will bring the Sunday law is these calamities, these wars taking place right now, is pushing us to a Sunday law. And I know many people are not talking about these wars. They don't want to care about these wars. They want to deal with everything else. But friends, listen, these wars are pushing us to a Sunday law. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of Sunday Sabbath, that this has brought calamities that will not cease until the Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced, and that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying the reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing the restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. So the spirit of war is now on the earth. It's going to get greater and greater. This is a calamity that will bring the national what? Talk to me. Sunday law. And Sister White says that the prophecies of Daniel chapter 11 are almost fulfilled. When you look at Daniel chapter 11, it talks about the king of the north pushing against the king of the south. A war. You're seeing church and state unite. Right? She said that this, these wars are going to bring a fulfillment to Daniel chapter 11. And Daniel 11 goes into Daniel 12. Daniel 12, 1, Michael stands up, close of probation, and the time of trouble begins. So it says here, the world is stirred with the spirit of what? War. The prophecy of the 11th chapter of Daniel has nearly reached its complete fulfillment. Soon the scenes of trouble spoken of and the prophecies will take place. So friends... It's time for us, when we see these wars taking place, to get on our knees and say, Lord, it's time to get ready. You want to know why? Because when the Southern Law passes, guess what? These nations warring each other, warring against each other, guess what's going to happen to them? They're going to stop warring. And now they're going to turn the war against the commandment-keeping people of God. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, And the dragon was wrought with who? The woman. And went to make what? Want to make what? War with the remnant of her seed. So they're going to stop warring each other and start warring against the commandment keeping people of God. If that's your say amen, friends. Amen. So the war will not stop. It will just be aimed at the people of God. Are you ready for war, friends? It's time to put our armor on. It's time to make sure we're right with God. Just today, I don't know why the song was on my head, in my head, but the song was in my head. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I will serve him till I die. We must be willing to go to war for Jesus. Stand up for his truth. All right, can we say amen? And when the attacks are aimed against us, not give up. Because these wars that we're seeing, God is saying, listen, very soon it's going to be aimed at each and every one of us. Oh, if God wants us to be ready. All right, can we say amen? And notice how the papacy comes in now. It says, Testimony to Church, Volume 7, page 182, paragraph 2. The world is filled with storm and war and variance. Yet under one head. Who's the head? The papacy? You mean the papacy is in control of these things right now? I thought he's bringing world peace. He stirs up the nation and creates a false understanding of peace. To aim more upon Protestants and God's commandment keeping people. Alright, can we say amen? The world is, is filled with storm and war and variance. Yet under one head, the papal power, the people will unite to oppose God in the person of his witness, witnesses. The union is cemented by the great what? By the great apostate. Now friends, when we see these wars, there's a call for them to come to an end. That is an indication that very soon the war is going to be pointed at you and I. Does that make sense? All right, friends. Do we see that these wars are being called to come to an end? Pope Francis, world needs peace in this time of what? What does he want to do? End the wars between the nations. Which means it will be directed towards you and I in these last days, friends. Are you going to say amen? It's time to make sure we get ready, friends, for what's coming. It's time to make sure we are praying and studying our Bibles and give our heart to Christ? Are you ready to stand with Jesus? Who shall be able to stand? We must fill our mind with Scripture. Study the Word of God. Give our hearts to Christ. Walk with Him day by day. That's how we get ready for what's coming, friends. Pope Francis is calling for peace in the midst of war. And we're told, when they shall say what? Peace, peace. What will happen? Sudden destruction will come. That's it. He says, let us pray for peace. We need peace 
The world is at war. Oh, friends. Listen, look at this. <laughs> In today's troubled world, by the way, what's the opposite of distress? Peace. That's it. That's it. In today's troubled world, building peace is humanity's greatest what? Responsibility. You see the date there? 2024. Do we see that these things are pushing us toward a Sunday law? Are you to be saying amen, friends? Amen. All right, listen. Failures of world leaders risk collapse of international order. To step back from the precipice we are at in those positions of power must show long view leadership to build a what? To build a better world for current and future generations. Now the world is saying this, but time is what? Not only is the spirit of prophecy saying this, the Bible is saying this, but the world is saying time is running out. To do what? To make the world a better place. So are they pushing plans to make the world a better place because time is running out? The world is saying time is running out. And that's what the Bible says, and that knowing the time. Jesus said, can you discern the signs of the? But people don't want to look at current events. They don't want to see these things. We will remain sleeping. And when this thing takes place, friends, we'll be unprepared. Are you going to say amen? Yes. Oh, friends, and the picture with this article, the world leaders standing together, the nations coming together. They are trying to do this before time runs out again. To step back from the precipice, we are at those in position of power must so long view leadership to build a better world for current and future generations. But time is what? What date do you see there, friends? June 1st, 2020. This was today. Are we at the end of time, friends? And very soon, Pope will be speaking at the G7 summit. Again, coming to the United Nations in September. The election, again, is in November. Things are happening with what? Quick succession. The final movements will be what? Talk to me. Do you believe it, friends? It's time to get things right with God. And people think that when you say certain things in the church, to awaken them. Oh, you're attacking the church. No, do you know how close we are? Everyone's going to wish they heard hard sermons at that time. But it's going to be too late. Are you going to say amen? That's it, friends. So it's happening. The time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. The observance of a false Sabbath will be urged upon us. The contest will be between the commandments of God and the commandments of men. Testimonies, volume 6, page 18. The test is not far distant. Can we see with our own eyes it's not far distant, friends? Yes, friends. So it is time for us to get ready. Are you me say amen? Church and state are doing what? Talk to me. Uniting. As the papacy saying, let's call for peace. And the world leaders are uniting together. Church and state will unite, we're told. The dignitaries of church and state will unite to bribe, persuade, compel all classes to honor the Sunday. The lack of divine authority will be supplied by oppressive enactments. So friends, listen, it's time for us to do what? Get ready. Get ready. All right, if you say amen. amen. All right, I told you I'm not going to preach long. I want to bring this to a close. But before I bring it to a close, what's our topic? God's people in a crisis. The nations are in what? Distress. As the world pushes for what? Global peace. What crisis is God's people in right now, friends? Listen, I have a few points. All from the spirit of prophecy. Number one, God is the devil is trying to keep God's people in a state of inactivity from spreading the gospel. There's a crisis of not doing evangelism. There's a crisis of not warning souls. There's a crisis of not spreading the gospel. The devil's trying to keep us in a state of inactivity so that we don't warn the world, our friends, our neighbors, those that we love and know, to prepare for what's coming. Satan is now seeking to hold God's people in a state of inactivity to keep them from acting their part and spreading the truth. That's a crisis. So friends, listen, what are you going to do in this crisis? Are you going to now share the gospel with others? Are you going to now obey God and do what he's called you to do for evangelism? Are you now going to obey God and say, Lord, help me. The devil's trying to do his best to distract me. 
Help me to stay focused so I can do your work. He's trying to keep us from spreading the gospel. It will be a crisis. Can you imagine the people that you know say, you knew these things and you never told me? You mean you were coming to a present truth church every single Sabbath and you never told me? You mean you understood truth that even the Adventist pastors and churches of other congregations are not preaching and you never told me? Friends, I don't want that to happen to me. Hurry, let me say amen. Even if they don't are not interested, share it, share it. Because you never know what the Holy Spirit can do with that seed. Hurry, let me say amen. And I'm talking to myself too. I have people in my mind right now that I know the Lord is telling me to witness to that have a little uh, resistance. But we need to do it anyway. Share it. Don't shove it. All right, let me say amen. Because the time will come where they might pick up that book and say, you know what, let me read and see what they're saying. Are you with me? Number one, the devil's trying to keep us in activity. That's a crisis. Number two, another crisis, the devil wants us to stay asleep. That's why we need to see the signs of the time so that we don't fall asleep. What shall I say to arouse the remnant people of God? I was shown that dreadful scenes are before us. My brother, my sister, if these precious moments of mercy are not improved, you will be left without excuse. If you make no special effort to arouse, wake up. If you will not manifest a zeal in the repenting, turning from sin, these golden moments will be soon passed by, pa uh, soon pass, and you'll be weighed in the balances of found wanting. So the second thing the devil wants to do to keep us in a crisis is to keep us asleep. All right, let me say amen. Listen, friends, I constantly keep the news on in my house. I have to see what's happening. I have to see. Lord, did you show me something that I overlooked? Help me to see to my Bible now. Right? We have to keep our eyes on the signs of what? The times. So that we don't fall asleep. What can I do to arouse them? Lord, I want to wake up. That I give a, a message that will wake up people. All right, let me say amen. All right, number three. Another crisis for God's people. God's people must take warning and discern the signs of the times. We reread this, all right? So this is saying that we must discern the signs of the times. So a crisis for God's people is not looking at current events. Do you see that, friends? If you're just passing by through life and not looking at the signs of the times, you're not discerning the signs of the times that we're living in right now, God can, the devil can keep us in a crisis. We have to see what's going on. Are you with me? All right. This should be number four. Procrastination. Procrastination. I was shown God's people are waiting. What are they doing? Waiting for some change to take place. A compelling power to take hold of them. But they will be disappointed. For they are wrong. They must act. They must take hold of the word themselves. And earnestly cry to God for a knowledge for a true knowledge of themselves. So she said, some people are just waiting. What are you waiting for? The Lord told you to do something Sunday. You don't do it Sunday. You say, I'll do it Monday. Don't do it Monday. You say, you do it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then the next week comes. And then the next month comes. And then you say, next year I will do it. The devil's trying to keep us waiting, procrastinating. Everything we need to do God's work, we have it in terms of, right now, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. Every other thing you need, tangibly, the Lord will provide it as you step out in faith. Are you with me, friends? Don't wait. Now is not the time to wait. He wants to keep us in procrastination. All right? The fifth thing, all right, that the devil is trying to do as a crisis for God's people is not let us confess and forsake all our sins. If we're not forsaken and confessing all of our sins, friends, we will not be ready for this war when it breaks upon the remnant. First, uh, it, it says here, Testimony to Church, Volume 1, page 263, paragraph 1, I, I warn all who profess the name of Christ to closely examine themselves. Make a thorough, a full and thorough confession of your wrongs. Confessing to God that they may go beforehand to judgment, that the recording angel may write what? Pardon opposite their names. So now is the time that we need to make sure everything is right between us and God. Before you go to bed at night, make sure every sin is what? Confess. Forsaken. Now is not the time to hold on to unconfessed sins. Friends, I want us to be saved. Are you with me say amen? And listen, if there's sins that you're struggling with, what do you need to do? What did Jacob do? I will not let you go until you? That's it. 
A crisis is coming. Esau is coming. The war is coming. I will not let you go until you bless me. Change my name. Are you with me? Say amen. Character. That's it. Make sure your sins that you know of are confessed and forsaken. All right? This is number six. All right? A lack of love. The devil's trying to keep a lack of love and unity among us. Why? Listen, you want to know why? We're going to need each other when the crisis comes. Did Joseph help his brothers? If you have ought against someone, when the crisis comes, yeah, prideful. And that will cause someone to be lost. We need each other, right? Let me say amen. amen. Yeah, we need each other. I was shown that the people of God should be closely united in bonds of Christian fellowship and love. God alone can shield our, can be our shield and strength in this time of national calamities. So friends, we need to make things right with each other, right? Let me say amen. That's it. The devil wants to keep us in a crisis by what we think about somebody else. Friends, it's time to put it down at the foot of the cross, at the altar of burnt offerings. Right? Let me say amen. amen. All right? Number seven. This will be our last one. One thing the devil is trying to get us to do is keep us from having a real spiritual experience with Jesus. Just watch TV all day. Browse on our phones all day. Go to different places and waste probation's time, right? Enjoy the things of the world so that when the crisis comes, we don't have the experience that we need. We're not going to have a Bible at that time, friends. No more sermons. No more person to help you. No, no more prayers for you. You got to stand on your own feet. All right, we say amen. The time of trouble such as never was is soon to break upon us and we shall need an experience that we do not now want, do not now possess. And which many are too indolent, that word means lazy, to obtain. It is often the case that trouble is greater in anticipation than in reality. But this is not true of the crisis, what? Before us. So friends, listen, we need to say, Lord, help me to stop being lazy. When it comes to everything else, we give our full strength, our full time. Right? Our work, our jobs, the pleasures of, of sin, the things of the world. When it's time for God... We give God the last 10 minutes of the day, yawning as we have devotion, falling asleep on our knees. If we are going to make it, we need to stop being lazy. All right, we say amen. I'm talking to myself. Amen. That's it. The devil's trying to keep us in a state of inactivity. The nations are in distress. Peace is being called for. The war is going to be on the remnant. And God is trying to wake us up while Satan is trying to keep us in a crisis. So friends, my prayer today is that we wake up we arouse. We stop being lazy. We agonize with God in prayer. We look at those who need the gospel and start witnessing. The devil is trying to keep us in a state of inactivity. Are you with me saying that, friends? You know, I wasn't going to share this current event because I didn't put it in the slides, but I'm going to share it anyway. You know, I saw just yesterday on the news, a, per a farmer was talking about how the government is taking over lands and not allowing people to grow their foods in certain areas. And you know what I thought about when I saw that? I said, man, not only is the devil trying to keep us in a state of inactivity in terms of spreading the gospel, he's trying to keep us in a state of inactivity to doing all that God asks us to do, like move to the country. While we have the time, right? Because the government is passing laws, changing different things. We need to do it right now. If we stay in a state of inactivity, we may be lost. And Lot's wife was lost because he lingered. Are you with me saying, man, friends? So listen, we need to agonize with God. And don't get scared. I'm, I'm not saying you need to run to the country tonight. you got to follow the Lord's leading. Are you going to be saying amen? But what I am saying, we can't procrastinate when the Lord is speaking to us. Are you with me? This may be our only chance. And with this H5 bird flu, they're saying, who knows if another pandemic would come and cities get locked down again. What are we going to do? So friends, my prayer today, let us arouse. Amen? Let's arouse. Let's get ready. By God's grace, we can prepare for this coming war. Amen? Amen? Were you blessed today? Did you learn something today, friends? All right, friends. Let's all, let's all stand as we pray. And then standing and saying, Lord, help me. Help me to come out of this crisis. Help me to get my life right with you, to prepare for what's coming. Things are happening in the world. It's time for us to get ready. Amen? Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, today we make a decision to say, Lord, help us to get ready. Help us to see that very soon this war is going to turn 
from Israel to Palestine, from Ukraine to Russia, from China to America, and all these different places warring. It's going to turn upon your remnant very soon. Help us to be ready. Help us to stay ready. Help us to get ready. Help us to realize that these signs of the times are fulfilling and that very soon we will see a Sunday law pass. Lord, help us to believe it. Help us to preach with urgency, to live with urgency. Everything we do to do it with urgency and preparation for your soon return. And I'm praying, Lord, because you said we don't have the experience that we need. Give us the strength to agonize in prayer with you. Give us the strength to say, Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. We will call another night of prayer very soon. Because we see these signs and we want to get ready. We want the world to get ready. Those in different churches to get ready. Those in different denominations to get ready. Those who don't even have a Bible or go to church. We want everyone to be ready for this event. Save us, we pray. Hear our prayer. Use us for your glory. Bless us as we depart. May your Holy Spirit not depart from us. May the words that we heard today be lodged in our hearts. And help us not to forget those three words. BRB. By. Repent. What's the last one? Behold, that's it. Hear our prayer, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.